pretty chuffed with that. Nice also that we've made these doors from scratch using essentially scrap wood. Now I'm skimming through this part of the process a little bit because this is all covered in the shaker door build series that we've produced. The doors were made from poplar which was just some rough sawn wood that I already had in the workshop and a couple of simple bits that I bought on Amazon and a round table I made up. So first time at making them but everything seemed to go fairly well. Now the moisture resistant MDF 6mm panel in the middle was the simplest and easiest option to do for that especially bearing in mind that these are all going to be painted doors and drawers. And then we move on to the prep and the painting. Again, this is perhaps a future video in itself, but this was all uh, done with the Graco airless sprayer that I bought a few months back and it's a really easy and good way to go for the doors it gets in all the nooks and crannies way way quicker than rolling and an amazing finish that said you've got to spray outdoors or in a spray booth so pick a good day and hope there's no flies around right new day new t-shirt just made up a little prototype if you uh, missed it on Instagram. Right, we've got two of the doors hung yesterday. They were the two 500 wall cabinets, fairly straightforward. So what I did to start with, and actually you could go this route rather than buying a jig, but I wanted to see the, the holes for the hinges were already pre-drilled in the factory made carcasses. So I, I didn't want to mess around adding them in different places. I marked up this stick, almost like a story stick, marked the top and bottom of the door, and then marked where the holes would be for the, the cups of the hinges. And then I can just use this to transfer our measurements onto the actual doors. I'm also just making sure that I've got the best kind of faces showing on the door. And like when you open it, that you see the best top. And I'll just pinch a towel out of the house to make sure that we don't scuff it on the table. About two years ago I bought this jig and it sat in the packaging and uh, this is just a, a Craig um, recess or concealed hinge jig. It sets it in the right amount, the right distance from the edge of the door. There's a guide here which prevents you from over drilling too deep. It's also got the scale on here so you can set it in correct amount from the top of the door and the bottom of the door. So I've got a little mark there, I'm just going to line up onto our zero mark. You can see because we're further than the scale in from the edge of the door, otherwise you could just line up and mark in. So I've got the towel underneath to not mark the bottom and it says use two clamps but to be honest I was holding this end and it was fine. Uh, and you just want to make sure it's snugged in against the, the side there so it's parallel. And then this little jobby here just slots in and twists and that locks it in place and then you're just free to go straight down. You can see these tiny little holes here, just a good way of getting your holes in the right place. These are just um, the regular soft clothes. They're a clip-on type, so you put the plate onto the carcass separately and then you can hang this, uh, fix this to the door then click them in and one, which is uh, what most of them tend to be nowadays. So all being well, that should sit in there. Probably best to screw them in by hand, but we'll go steady. Now I did buy this jig because I knew I had a load of doors to do, but if you were to only have a few doors, you just wanted to make up your own um, jig and save some money, then 
like I said, go this route, maybe make it out of some thicker material, 12 mil, 18 mil, use a regular 35 mil force in a bit, and then when you're drilling with that force in a bit, after you've done a few tests um, to make sure it's gonna house your hinge correctly, halfway down through your material, you can put a mark there, that'll you know give you a precise idea of how deep your cut cutout is. So you can get, a, you know, you can clamp this on, make sure it's nice and clean so you're not gonna damage the doors at all. But there's there's loads of ways you can go without buying um, gadgets. That's it, job done. It's like one of those things that once you, if you've got a load of them to do, the first one will take you 10 minutes, the next one will take you two minutes. Um, so it's nice to have a little production line when you know what you're doing. Um, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Right, quick explanation before the washing machine starts spinning again. Uh, this is where we're going. Like I said, we've got the sink in the top 150 mil of the unit. Might put a little blanking plate in there and I can just pocket all that in if needed. But for now, just a full height door, nice and simple. Excuse the mess. So these already have their screws in them and the holes are here along with loads of other holes for this being cute unit. Then like with all these concealed hinges, you've got adjustment in, out, back, forward, in, out, shake it all about. Oh, and then we forgot my tea cakes are in there. Excuse the washing machine. Next job, I've got these 150 mil larder units that I stole out of the kitchen when we redid that coffee machine. And they've managed to pick up some 400 or 450 drawer slides which I'm hoping are going to line up with these existing holes because there's no way I can get a drill in there or a, anything really, even a right angle drill wouldn't do it. Alright, doing another hour or two out here this morning and slight change of plan, I did manage to fit our drawer slides in there but we've now decided um, that we're only going to have one which is a pull out, one's going to be a hinge door. It's going to be a hinge door with either trays or bottle storage in there. It's just a bit easier. I've also got the hinges. The problem I was facing is this is a 150mm unit. By the time you take away the, st the two sides, if I build a, a, a wooden plywood or MDF um, pull out, you actually end up with a very, very thin storage space. Fine for little jars and spices and things like that, but actually out here where we've got detergents and stuff that's actually going to be used next to the laundry area it really needs to be one of the wire racks which we've used in the kitchen so I've ordered one of those for over on that end but here like I say we'll keep it simple just put a little hinged door on here the other thing I need to do is install some kind of separators so I've painted up some 18 mm um, wood to go in here they're cut to size and the height and they're basically going to be in between these two units so that when we come to do our chest freezer pull out, I can still have the little kickboards either side and uh, and we'll do something different with the freezer. So that's what's gonna go in here. I've got a third one to go up there to help support the worktop between the two appliances. So I'm gonna pull out the chest freezer, get both of these installed. That will be also be where our hinges go on for the, the 600 mil door, which is going in front of here. Um, I'll come back to this. I think I will do a separate video on how I'm gonna manage the freezer. I started messing around making up rollers out of scraps and I mean being on lockdown here there's no uh, no nipping out to grab exactly what I need. The appliance rollers didn't really work because they were too high so we're going to come back to this but the the general idea is that we can have a door and then pull out the freezer and the, for now I can get on and install the door and we can slide the freezer out on the floor like we've been doing for the last few months. I'll mention it in a bit more detail at the end of the video, but this freezer is simply used for bulk storage and that is the reason why we've gone for a chest freezer over something with drawers or shelves. 
So yes, it looks a little bit clumsy, but actually it gives us a load more space for all the meat and veg that comes out of our garden. Having drilled uh, hinges in both the MDF and these timber frames, I can tell you that it's a way, way easier to drill in the hardwood or softwood frames rather than MDF. The shavings are much cleaner, they come out and they clear out a lot easier. You do with the MDF get it, it clogs up and you really almost need a vacuum sucking as you're drilling uh, throughout the whole part of the process. What I was trying to explain earlier is I put this 18mm verticals in to kind of act as the door sides of the 600 space that's here. Um, I've also allowed for the fact that if we wanted to do away with the freezer or get some integrated unit in the future, it's 600, it's fixed. I could put slider unit in there and be done with it. When we've got our little plinth down here, or kickboard, that we need to put in, it's got something to terminate against. Then when it comes to the freezer section, it might be because of the depth of the freezer, we have to step it out a little bit there and put a trim on here. Also, there's an LED light there, which is telling me that the freezer's not gone kaput and we haven't lost all of our food. So I'm thinking if I do make a trim for there, I'll drill a little hole just so that that light will shine through. But apart from that, that's done. So we'll make up some uh, boards in a minute. Before we do that, I forgot to install our trim. So I've I made up a spare door uh, or spare kind of 150 door blank and that way I could cut it down to do the scribe section this end and that end and I hope that once that's up under the way there and I've scribed it slightly to the wall because the wall wasn't quite perfect then we'll just have to adjust the door to snug it in a little bit that way so that everything's flush along the front. So in the future we'll build a, a little skeleton shelf type thing that we can slide in there uh, and that will take those but apart from that maybe the trays for now might be quite an easy place to keep trays or oven roasting trays that you only use once a year. Right, I was just finishing up the edit of the video and realised I didn't actually do an outro and didn't show you the finished article. Now there are a few things to finish up top and some trim and things like that, um, but for my first shot at cabinets from scratch, um, I think they went pretty well. One thing to point out is when you're using MDF, which I did for the centre panels on these larger doors, um, it takes a lot of work to make it look good. You know, if you're trying to make it so it's super smooth and you haven't got any of those fibres showing, it takes a lot of undercoat and fill and sanding and more sanding. Whereas when you're using hardwood for the actual frames like I did here, if they're planed and sanded correctly, then there's not a huge amount, you can't go too far wrong. Now the jury's still out on the freezer situation because uh, I didn't really explain it in the video, but the reason I always prefer in this situation for a chest freezer is just down to capacity and the fact that it's long-term storage. We've got a small sensible freezer in the kitchen this is just simply for something that we need to get to every few weeks. Yes, ideally I need to be able to pull it out. Draw slides are not the answer, um, but I'm looking for something that is super low profile. No, nothing on the market that I can find seems to fit the bill, um, but perhaps some of the recessed casters and I'll cut them into the metal base, or 
even like the balls that you get, I can't remember what they're called, or transfer balls, you know, like you get the airport for your luggage to go along or in a factory. Um, those might work upside down at the bottom, but might dent the floor, but happy to hear any suggestions on that. But there we go, that's my first attempt at DIY cabinetry. Uh, it's fine for out here in the utility. I think I'd need a bit more practice before taking on a full kitchen. It's also been tricky because it's nice weather and there's about a dozen other projects on the go here at the moment. Uh, Joe's been doing some plumbing and a shower install, plus I've been building the whole cabinetry and face frames and everything in there as well. You're gonna, you're gonna just take over? Anyway, any questions, stick them down below. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.